Pomona. On behalf of the faculty and staff in the College of Engineering, I welcome you to the virtual project showcase. Let me start by mentioning that all attendees have viewing only access so that our student teams can focus on their presentations. There are 26 student presenters from seven teams representing all of our departments in the College of Engineering. At this moment, we have attendees that are from industry, alumni, members of the campus community, engineering, faculty, staff and students, and other friends and family supporters. We started this morning with the project symposium featuring dozens of team-based virtual presentations by almost 400 students. Some of the presentations were held live in the virtual meeting rooms and many more were pre-recorded in the days leading up to the event. If you had not had a chance to view some of the pre-recorded presentations, then I encourage you to do so. I am impressed with the quality of the work and the high level of participation from our student teams who quickly adapted to an evolving ex academic expectations. The symposium and showcase event is important for our students because it gives them the opportunity to summarize a project in a public forum, especially to industry leaders. It is also a significant learning experience stressing teamwork, organization, and communication, important elements in an engineering career. Our learn by doing teaching philosophy endures as we continue to educate more than 5,900 engineering students. And today's event is a wonderful time to shine a light on the nearly 1,300 workforce ready engineers completing their degrees later this month. Now I'd like to take a moment to speak directly to our student presenters and student attendees who are taking their final steps towards graduation right now. Although your commencement ceremony will be delayed, do not lose sight of the fact that, then, that in just a few short weeks, you would have achieved the goal that brought you to Cal Poly Pomona. You have earned a college degree from one of the finest engineering colleges in the nation. Many of you will be, in, will be the first in your family to graduate from college. Others will represent the latest generations of Bronco alumni, 160,000 in your family. Earning your degree will be a testament to your talent and tenacity. You are among the future leaders who will help change the world. And now, back to discussing today's event. As mentioned, there are seven teams representing all of our departments in the College of Engineering, and each has a time certain start. Many of our teams you see in the showcase are here today because they earned their spot in the lineup. Some departments developed a competitive process and others reviewed presentations for teams to be selected for participation today. All of our showcase student presenters should be proud of the work for which they were selected to represent their department at this premier college event. This is an unusual year, and as such, we have decided not to judge presentations to rank the top three. Instead, this year, all student presenters and their team members in the showcase will receive a small cash award from the college to recognize their academic excellence. Now I'd like to introduce Alexis Tay, career specialist for the College of Engineering. She has been helping our college connect students to industry opportunities, and we are happy to have her here today to introduce each project presentation. Alexis. Thank you, Dean Rensis. I'm happy to be here with you all today. As a representative of the Career Center, I serve engineering students by helping them make informed and strategic career choices. In this uncertain time, I'm here to help. For students that are watching this presentation, 
please don't let this pandemic put a stop to your professional development and job search efforts. And please know that I am here for you over email, LinkedIn, and by appointment for any questions that you may have and to provide resources and opportunities to you. For industry representatives, if you would like to connect with any of the talented engineering students you hear from today, then please send me an email and I will be happy to connect you. I can also help publicize internship or job opportunities to all students in the College of Engineering. Now let the showcase presentations begin. I will start each one by reading the project title and the abstract and then welcoming the team to share their presentation. After each presentation concludes, we will take a short break from speaking until the next time certain start. Our first student presentation is from the Aerospace Engineering Department and is titled NASA Student Launch Initiative. And now here is their project abstract. The NASA Student Launch Initiative offers students from around the nation the opportunity to participate in a competition consisting of a launch vehicle with a solid motor reaching a predetermined altitude, landing with a dual deployment parachute system, and then deploying a payload within a range of one mile to collect a sample. Over the course of eight months, the Cal Poly Pomona Aerospace student team submitted and participated in six design reviews with a team of NASA engineers through a live virtual conference platform. I now invite the aerospace engineering team to share their presentation. Hello and welcome to the NASA Student Launch Team. Our advisor is Dr. Don Edberg. This is Cal Poly Pomona's eighth year attending this national competition. Please enjoy our project showcase. Next slide. My name is Alexander Scott. I am the project lead. Also speaking today, we have Mitchell Huang, our launch vehicle lead, Polo De Los Santos, our avionics lead, and John Nakayama, our payload lead. Next slide. Back. Back one. Forward one. Thank you. Um, so NSL is an annual competition held in April at the NASA Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama. Our goal is to design build and launch an L-class rocket that deploys a scientific payload. This year's competition aims to simulate a future NASA mission to collect an ice sample from the lunar surface. Next slide. So we have two main objectives this year. Uh, the first was to design a rocket that will carry a rover payload to 3,700 feet and bring it back down to the ground safely and then deploy it. Next, that rover must drive to a recovery area up to one mile away and then collect and store a 10 milliliter ice sample. Next slide. So our mission starts with an autonomous phase uh, where the rocket is launched to an apogee of 3,700 feet. At apogee, a drogue, a small parachute deploys and slows our vehicle down to a uh, safe speed. At around 500 feet, our main parachute is deployed and slows us down further to a safe speed for landing. Once the craft has landed, we request approval from the range safety officer, the RSO, for payload deployment. Um, then we deploy the payload out the front of the rocket and drive to the nearest sample, collect the sample, and then drive 20 feet away. This concludes our competition. Next slide. Please enjoy our full scale launch flight test. Okay, sky is clear. Range is clear. Five, four, three, two, one. Thank <laughs> you.
Next, I would like to introduce Mitchell, our launch vehicle lead. Next slide. Mitchell, you're muted. Sorry. To verify that our vehicle will function the way we designed it to, we first build a subscale vehicle to test its capability. For our subscale vehicle, it was named SAD, acronym for Surface to Air Disappointment. For SAD, it's a certain inch diameter rocket, the total length is about 54 inches, and it weighs about seven pounds. The geometric scaling factor from our subscale to full scale vehicle is about 1 to 2.29. Next slide. Ironically, our stat actually disappointed us at our first launch. As shown to the right, our first launch, our stat failed to deploy, the atomometer failed to fire during descent, which caused the vehicle to nose dive. And we don't have a success recovery as shown in the picture. Learning and building from our failure. The stat number two, our second subscale flight was a successful launch and recovery. Next slide. Going to our full scale vehicle design. On top, you can see a cab model of our vehicle. In front, that is our payload and our payload integration design. In the middle, we have our main shoe, our ballast, avionics as our stroke chute. In the end, that's our motor and motor attachment. On the bottom of the, of the slide, you can see a built version of our vehicle. For our full scale vehicle, its total length is about seven, a total length is about 113 inches and it's about 7.5 inch wide. It weighs almost 51 pounds and it's made of Bluetooth. Next slide. A unique design of our vehicle is our ballast storage. For our ballast storage, we utilize a 3D printed storage that you that can hold steel ball bearing. With this design, we can ensure that our vehicle can hit a target altitude depending on our, the launch state condition by changing the take long, vehicle takeout weight. Another unique design of our ballast storage is that it is placed at our CG of a vehicle. By doing so, we can minimize the effect of uh, the changing weights on our flight profile. And next, I'd like to pass it on to Polo, our avionic lead. So here we have a quick uh, overview of our recovery subsystem. So as you might expect, what comes up must also come down. So should our launch vehicle not come down safely as it did in our first uh, SAD test flight, uh, the payload could be compromised and the mission uh, the payload could be damaged and the mission could be compromised. So to prevent this, NASA has actually provided us with many uh, recovery criteria. The most critical of which is the descent time of 1.5 minutes or about 90 seconds from apogee for, for, for us is uh, 3,700 feet to touchdown. So uh, in order to accomplish this, we have a redundant dual deploy system. So we have a drogue parachute, which is a smaller size parachute to slow the vehicle down uh, just enough that so that the main parachute can uh, be more effective. And then when it slows it down enough, the main parachute will deploy, which will bring the whole vehicle down safely so that all the components inside the rocket are safe. Uh, and all of these parachutes are deployed by uh, redundant flight altimeters, uh, which are basically flight computers. Uh, next slide. So what is redundancy? Redundancy is essentially two or more equivalent systems running in parallel uh, so that should one system fail, the other system will continue on ensuring the mission is uh, not compromised. So in our system, we have redundant, two redundant altimeters, uh, as you can see in the picture there, which are the small PCBs. These are essentially just uh, flight computers that record flight data, such as the pressure, uh, time, acceleration, and other data for post-launch analysis, as well as uh, when the proper altitude is sensed. High currents will be set off to uh, explosive powder located in the black powder wells, as shown in the picture, uh, to deploy. Uh, the black powder will explode, separating the different sections of the rocket, also um, exposing the parachutes to uh, slow the rocket down safely. Some other electronics that we have are a GPS and it's located inside the nose cone of the rocket that helps us find the uh, rocket uh, 
that helps us find the rocket later on when it lands and all of these electronics are powered by lithium polymer batteries. Next I'll be passing on to Jonathan, uh, Jonathan our payload lead. Next slide. All right, sorry about that. <clears throat> this is a brief payload mission concept of operations, which starts once the rocket lands back on the ground. First, the retention system powers on, pushing out the rocket's nose cone and the payload. Then the rover establishes a wireless communication with the payload operator, after which the rover quickly exits the retention system, drives to the nearest recovery area, after which it collects and stores the soil sample and drives the required 20 feet away. I'd now like to talk a little bit about our retention and deployment system. To secure the payload inside of our rocket during flight, a servo actuated pin is attached to the back of the rover, shown here on the right. For the deployment sequence, a stepper motor and ball screw are used to push out the rocket's nose cone and the rover container. The rover is then guided out onto the ground using two linear slides. Now a little bit about the rover. Our rover was completely manufactured out of 3D printed PET-G. It features four independently driven wheels and is controlled using a custom circuit design powered by an Arduino Nano. One of the key rover features is, is its externally mounted soil sample recovery mechanism. Shown on the left here is a cutaway view of the collection device that actually has no moving parts. Instead, it uses a series of flanges that allow the sample to easily enter but not exit the storage container. Another key feature of our rover is its terrain maneuverability. At the competition in Huntsville, we would have been launching on tilled farmland. And because of this, we wanted to ensure that the rover could navigate any terrain obstacles that it could potentially encounter. And finally, the last feature of our rover is its ability to flip itself over. We wanted to ensure that no matter what happened to the rover, it would be able to self-orient in the event that it landed on its side or got toppled over. This also prevents the rover from getting stuck if it were to be deployed out of the rocket on its side. Back to Alex. Thank you. In conclusion, we successfully designed, manufactured, and tested a fully functioning payload and launch vehicle. We met or exceeded all NASA student launch payload and launch vehicle experiment requirements and completed one full-scale demonstration flight before our competition was canceled. On top of that, we created a portfolio of detailed documentation and lessons learned to help future teams succeed. The final NASA student launch competition scores and rank will be announced June 2020. Thank you for allowing us to share with you. Have a good day. Thank you, aerospace engineering team. We will